A gathering of angels appeared above my head. They sang to me this song of hope, and this is what they said. They said, come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me. Okay. Now that you guys have lived through that, um, that was my intro. So thank you for hanging out with me while I sang that. Um, but that is a clue as to what we're going to be talking about today with the second installment of Enoch. Okay. So without too much further ado, I am going to pray and we are going to get into this. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you so much for today. And I ask that you would just bless each and every person that visits my channel. I ask that God, you would speak to them. I give this over to you. I surrender it to you completely and fully. I ask God that you would speak through me. I haven't put on the full armor of God today so that I'm going to do that real quick. So Father, I thank you for putting on the the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace. Thank you for helping me to take up the shield of faith, put on the helmet of salvation, and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And God, I thank you for um, just blessing this day. And like I said, please bless everyone that visits my channel. And we give this over to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, okay, let's get started on this, guys. I've got a lot of stuff I've got to get done today. And so this was the first thing on my list because I didn't do it last night. I thought about it, but um, I, I clean houses and some days I have really big houses. And so I'm tired at the end of the day. And the only thing I want to do is come home and just do nothing. So... I told myself last night, I knew people wanted me to get this out, but here it is today. So, okay. Chapter six is called Taken by Angels. Okay. Father, I ask that you would anoint my words and I ask that you would just, in fact, I am going to go ahead and anoint myself. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask God that you would just be with me while I'm reading this and help me to give it and to help me to give you glory, God, in this, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Angels took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire. And when they wished, they appeared as men. And they brought me to the place of darkness and to a mountain, the point of whose summit reached to heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasuries of the stars and of the thunder and in the uttermost depths, where were a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and a fiery sword and all the lightnings. And they took me to the living waters and to the fire of the west, which receives every setting of the sun. And I came to a river of fire in which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west. That sounds pretty cool, you guys. I mean, really. Okay. I saw great rivers and came to the great river and to the great darkness and went to the place where no flesh walks. I saw the mountains of the darkness of winter and the place whence all the waters of the deep flow. I saw the mouths of all the rivers of the earth and the mouth of the deep. I saw the treasuries of all the winds. I saw how he had furnished with them the whole creation and the firm foundations of earth. And I saw the cornerstone of earth. I saw the four winds which bear the firmament of heaven. And I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heaven and have their station between heaven and earth. These are the pillars of heaven. I saw the winds of heaven which turn and bring the circum circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting. I saw the winds on the earth carrying the clouds. I saw the paths of angels. I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of heaven above, and I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night, where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones. Okay, I'm going to stop myself. 
Seven mountains, guys. Wow, that's weird. Okay, let's keep going. Praise the Lord. Three towards the east and three towards the south. And as for those towards the east, was of colored stone and one of pearl and one of jacinth and those towards the south of red stone. But the middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God of alabaster and the summit of the throne was of sapphire. And I saw a flaming fire and beyond these mountains is a region of the end of the great earth and there the heavens were completed. So it's kind of like, you guys know when you're playing like a video game and you get to the end of the world and like it glitches you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Where were we? Okay. Verse 18. And beyond that abyss, I saw a place which had no firmament of heaven above and no firmly founded earth beneath it. There was no water upon it and no birds, but it was a waste and a horrible place. I saw there seven stars like great burning mountains. And to me, when I inquired regarding them, the angel said, this place is the end of heaven and earth. This has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven. And the stars which roll over the fire are they which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in the beginning of their rising because they did not come forth at their appointed times. And he was wroth with them and bound them till the time when their guilt should be consummated for 10,000 years. And Uriel said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Nothing new under the sun, y'all. Here shall they stand till the end of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. And the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. I know it's getting weird up in here, but I mean, come on, you guys. All these myths of legend and all these stories, all this folklore, it comes from somewhere. These men that reported seeing mermaids were not just Whistle and Dixie. They weren't just seeing manatees. They were seeing these things. It's just true. And um, I don't know if you all remember, <clears throat> but a few years back, they had this special on the Discovery Channel about mermaids. So you should look that up and uh, check it out. But anyway, if you can find it, if they haven't scrubbed it from the internet. You know what? I'm going to try and see if I can find that Discovery Channel special. Of course, they make a disclaimer at the beginning of it that this is just for entertainment purposes only because they have to say that, guys. Okay? So, but I'm going to find that if, if it can still be found. And I'm going to attach it to this video so you all can check it out. So, if you're bored today and you want to learn about mermaids, you're welcome. Okay, moving along. Uh, and I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the end of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. Well, way to brag, Enoch. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I love you, I love you, I love you. Okay, praise the Lord. He knows I'm just kidding with you. Okay, now, chapter 7, the holy angels. And these are the names of the holy angels who watch mankind. Uriel, one of the holy angels, who is over the world and over Tartarus. Now, if you didn't know this, I do believe, you can look this up, that Tartarus is the lowest level of hell. It was created for the devil and the fallen angels. Okay, moving along. Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the spirits of men. Raguel, I, I'm sorry, dude, if I said your name wrong. I really, really am, okay? Okay. One of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of luminaries. Well, thank goodness he's not taking vengeance on the world of humans because I said his name wrong. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit, he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Sarakel, I like that name. That's a cool name, dude. Anyway, one of the holy angels who is set over the spirits who sin in the spirit. Uh-oh. Don't be sinning in the spirit, y'all. Praise God. 
Okay, Gabriel, one of the holy angels. I said his name wrong last time. I literally called him Gabriel. I'm sure that he was just like, wow. Anyway, Gabriel, one of the holy angels who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Now, cherubim are a ranking of angels. I do believe if I'm not mistaken, I think that cherubim are higher than seraphim, but I'm not sure on that. That I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Remiel, one of the holy angels, whom God set over those who rise. And I proceeded to where things were chaotic. And I saw there something horrible. I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth, but a place chaotic and horrible. And I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it like great mountains and burning with fire. And then I said, for what sin are they bound? And on what account have they been cast in thither? Or hither, whatever. <laughs> okay. Then said Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me and was chief over them, and said, Enoch, why dost thou ask and why art thou eager for the truth? These are the number of the stars of heaven, which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and are bound here till 10,000 years. The time entailed by their sins are consummated. And from thence I went to another place, which was still more horrible than the former. And I saw a horrible thing, a great fire there, which burnt and blazed. And the place was cleft as far as the abyss, being full of great descending columns of fire. Neither its extent nor or magnitude could I see, nor could I conjecture. And then I said, how fearful is the place and how terrible to look upon. Then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said to me, Enoch, why hast thou such fear and affright? Basically, he's like, why are you scared, dude? <laughs> That's funny. Okay. And I answered, because of this fearful place and because of the spectacle of the pain. And he said unto me, this place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. I'm debating whether I should tell you guys, I had a vision of hell when I first came to the Lord um, in my early 20s. Uh, I took a nap one afternoon. This was when I lived at the Mary Elizabeth Maternity Home. And I went to sleep one afternoon. I was pregnant with my oldest daughter. And um, I'm going to be very graphic. So I'm just going to tell you what I saw. So I saw this woman to begin with, very beautiful. But then it was like the camera focused in on her eyeball and there were worms all over her eyeball. And I could see that she was obviously a demon. So then it was like the camera went down and I began to, to descend. And I saw... Um, like there was this pit of people and, um, they were being like, their heads were being removed from their bodies and put down this chute and their heads were melting, but they could still feel the pain. I also saw their people's entrails were being ripped out up from them and they could still feel the pain. Um, the third and final thing that happened the Bible says that hell is a place of gnashing of teeth. Let me tell you, it is not kidding about that. I heard what sounded like this gigantic monster that was gnashing its teeth so loudly that it was deafening. I started screaming like, God, please get me out of here. Even though I wasn't there, like I couldn't feel any of the heat like people have, you know, described before that have been to hell. I couldn't feel anything. I, I could just, I was scared to death and I could see what was going on. So the Lord kind of took me there in the spirit and showed me. So yeah, anyway, moving along now. Um, <clears throat> starting in verse 18. And thence I went to another place, the mountain of hard rock. And there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at. Then Raphael answered, one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, these hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. 
yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. And these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment, and till their appointed period, till the great judgment upon them. And I saw a dead man making suit, and his voice went forth to heaven and made suit. And I asked Raphael, the angel who is with me, and I said unto him, The spirit which maketh suit, whose is it? Whose voice goeth forth and maketh suit to heaven? And he said, he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew. And he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Did you guys notice there how Abel made a distinction between Cain's seed and his? Genesis 3.15, y'all. Okay, moving along. Then I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places, why is one separated from the other? And he answered me and said unto me, These three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And such a division has been made for the spirits of the righteous, in which there is the bright spring of water. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirits shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever, and such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction when they were slain in the days of sinners. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners, who were complete in transgression, and of the transgressors they shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who ruleth forever. From thence I went to another place to the west of the ends of the earth, and I saw a burning fire which ran without resting and paused not from its course a day or night, but regularly. And I asked, saying, What is this which rests not? Then Raguel, Raguel, I don't know. Dude, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. One of the holy angels who was with me answered me and said unto me, This course of fire which thou hast seen is the fire in the west which persecutes all the luminaries of heaven. And from thence I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night. And I went beyond it, and I saw seven magnificent mountains, all differing each from the other, and the stones were magnificent and beautiful, magnificent as a whole, of glorious appearance and fair exterior, three towards the east, one founded on the other, and three towards the south, one upon the other, and deep rough ravines, none of which joined with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it excelled them in, in height, resembling the seat of a throne and fragrant, fragrant. Let's try fragrant. Okay. Trees encircled the throne, and amongst them was a tree such as I had never seen, or, I'm sorry, never yet smelt. Neither was any among them, amongst them, nor were others like it. It had a fragrance beyond all fragrance, and its leaves and blooms and wood wither not forever. And its fruit is beautiful, and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm. And then I said, how beautiful is this tree and fragrant, and its leaves are fair, and its blooms very delightful in appearance. Then answered Michael, one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader, obviously. Okay, and he said to me, Enoch, why dost thou ask me regarding the fragrance of the tree, and why dost thou wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him, saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered, saying, This high mountain which thou hast seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal king will sit when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment. When he shall take vengeance on all and bring to its consummation forever, it shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. 
it shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal king. Then shall they re rejoice with joy and be glad, and into the holy place shall they enter, and its fragrance shall be in their bones, and they shall live a long life on earth, such as thy fathers lived, and in, the, and in their days shall no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. Then I blessed the God of glory, the eternal king, who hath prepared such things for the righteous, and hath created them and promised to give them to, to them. And I went from thence to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming. And there I saw a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this, and between them a deep and narrow ravine. In it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. And to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former and of small elevation, and a ravine deep and dry between them. And another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. And all the ravines were deep and narrow and of hard rock, and trees were not planted upon them. And I marveled at the rocks, and I marveled at the ravine. Yea, I marveled very much. Then said I, For what object is this blessed land, which is entirely filled with trees, and this accursed valley between? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, This accursed valley is for those who are accursed forever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered who utter with their lips against the Lord unseemly words and of his glory speak hard things. Here they shall be gathered together, and here shall be the place of judgment. In the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. In the days of judgment over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously. <laughs> Yay. Okay. And thence I went towards the east and into the mid midst of the mountain range of the desert. And I saw a wilderness and it was solitary, full of trees and plants. And water gushed forth from above, rushing like a copious water course towards the north, west, because it, west it caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side. And thence I went to another place in the desert and approached the east of this mountain range. And there I saw aromatic trees ex exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh. That would be cool. And the trees were also similar to the almond tree. And beyond these, I went afar to the east, and I saw another place, a valley of water, and therein was a tree, the color of fragrant trees, such as the mastic. Okay. <laughs> and on the sides of those valleys, I saw fragrant cinnamon. And beyond these, I proceeded to the east. And I saw other mountains, um, and amongst them were groves of trees, and there were flowed from them nectar, which is named Sarara and Galbanum. And beyond these mountains, I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth, whereon were aloe trees, and all the trees were full of stacti. I'm not sure. It says S-T-A-C-T-E. I'm going to have to look that up, y'all, because I don't know what it means. So, yay. Anyway, moving along. Being like almond trees. Okay, cool. When one burnt, it smelled sweeter than any other fragrant odor. And okay. And after these fragrant odors, as I looked toward the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice, nard, and fragrant trees, and cinnamon and pepper. And thence I went over to the summits of all these mountains far towards the east of the earth, and passed above the Erethrian Sea, and went far from it, and passed over the angel Zotiel. Now that is a cool angel name, okay? I want to meet the angel Zotiel because he's got such a cool name. And I came to the garden of righteousness and from afar off, I saw numerous trees and these great two trees, they're very great, beautiful and glorious and magnificent. And the tree of knowledge, whose holy fruit they eat and know great wisdom. That tree is in height like the strangler fig and its leaves are like the carob tree and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine. Very beautiful. 
and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, how beautiful is the tree and how attractive it is to look at. Then Raphael, the holy angel who is with me, answered me and said, This is the tree of wisdom, of which thy father old and thy aged mother who were before thee have eaten. And they learnt wisdom, and their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and so they were driven out of the garden. And from thence I went to the ends of the earth and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other, and birds also differing in appearance and beauty and voice, the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth, whereon the heaven rests, and the portals of heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names, their courses and their positions, and their times and their months, as Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, showed me. He showed all things to me and wrote them down for me. Also, their names he wrote for me and their laws and their companies. And from thence I went towards the north to the ends of the earth. And there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. Through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow there, it is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one portal they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth, and they blow with violence. And from thence I went towards the west, to the ends of the earth, and saw there three portals of the heaven open, such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals and the same number of outlets. And from thence I went to the south, to the ends of the earth, and saw there three open portals of the heaven, and thence there came dew, rain, and wind. And from thence I went to the east, to the ends of the heaven, and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open and small portals above them. This is hard to, like, imagine, but I'm trying. I don't know about y'all. Okay, through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. And as often as I blessed always the Lord of glory, and I continued to bless the Lord of glory who has wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to the spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. All right, guys. Since that was a little bit lengthy, um, that was only one chapter. That was chapter six. <laughs> so since that was a bit lengthy, um, I'm going to stop there and I will be back with uh, part three just as soon as I can. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that you took something away from that, that something blessed you. And as always, I love you guys and I will see you in the next video.